he went over and he was looking at uh, Neil's scooter and the trailer. And uh, right as he's walking up to us, he said, man, that looks like something Quasi Motard would do. <laughs> a little bit of a collector of multiple flavors like I am. <laughs> there he goes. Wheelie boy. for tonight. So the rule ain't really a rule then, is it? It's more of a suggestion. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, my uh, my scooter trip uh, took a little bit of a detour. <laughs> uh, uh, I was originally planning on doing this on the PCX-150 and had everything prepped and loaded and ready to go. And uh, unfortunately, my rear tire patch did not hold. Uh, it was losing air. And I checked on it uh, yesterday, it seemed to be okay. Uh, I checked it again this morning and it had lost like, I don't know, seven or eight pounds, just pretty much in one day. So that means uh, it's not uh, good to go. So I transferred all my stuff over to the uh, 500X and I'm hitting the road. Uh, I'll be meeting Neil in Louisiana, uh, Deritter or something, I forget the, it's somewhere in Louisiana, uh, right kind of sort of near the southern end of the Natchez Trace. So we're going to camp up there in Louisiana tonight and uh, then in the morning sometime after, I don't know, you know probably 8.39 ish, something like that, we're going to hit the road and get on the uh, southern end of the Natchez Trace and ride the Natchez all the way up pretty much to Tennessee. Uh, and we'll be stopping, you know, along the way. Uh, this is uh, a planned eight-day trip. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do the whole thing. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, but I definitely want to do at least a few days of it. And we're going to have some very cold temperatures uh, overnight. Uh, not tonight or tomorrow night, but beginning, uh, I think, Sunday night uh, is when things get uh, a little bit nippy. So... We'll fill this thing up on fuel here real quick and uh, get to it. Yeah, I brought my tent gear instead of the hammock gear this time because I'm anticipating really cold temperatures and it's just easier to manage that uh, in a tent than it is with a hammock because you don't have all that air passing underneath you. Uh, I'm bringing the Kamek Sunda 2, which is a convertible tent hammock, uh, but I won't be using it in... Uh, hammock mode most likely so I got all my insulation uh, as far as uh, warm sleeping bag and uh, stuff to survive the cold it's gonna be very cold those nights uh, below freezing uh, right at or below freezing a couple nights I think so always makes it a bit of a challenge all right everybody welcome back it's about an uh, hour and a half later it's uh, 2.07 in the afternoon. Uh, well, it's about two hours later, I guess. Uh, finally did the gauntlet of stupidity, which is Houston. <laughs> Managed to get out of town. Narrowly missed two accidents that happened next to and behind me. Uh, there are accidents all over the road in Houston today. People are just being complete buffoons. So uh, I'm glad to be out of it, away from it, before rush hour kicks in, because it's just going to get worse. Uh, but I'm out uh, northeast of the metro now, past Dayton, headed toward uh, some rural roads uh, going into the northeast corner of Texas and Louisiana. So I'll be uh, arriving in DeVille, Louisiana. It's like my arrival time is right at 6 p.m., so i got about four hours to go, a little less. And uh, probably won't record much. Again, it's just boring straight lines nothing entertaining until we get to uh the natchez trace tomorrow morning but i will tune back in and uh give a road report as i get close to the campgrounds tonight and uh i will hopefully record some uh camp setup here's a good example uh comparison between the garmin zumo xt and a new samsung galaxy s22 ultra uh, for navigation so I don't know how well that comes out on camera, but you can see this. The sun is directly behind me, shining right on the faces of these things and washing out the displays. You can really see that Zumo XT. You can kind of sort of see the 
phone if you shield it. <laughs> of course, the angles are a little bit different, so there's some, some sun reflection, but uh, that Zumo XT has got a fantastic display. It's just amazing. I wouldn't call it full daylight readable, but I mean, with sun behind me shining on it, it's still very, very legible. Good stuff. All right, everybody. Well, I'm zooming in on the home run here. I'm about a mile and a half out, and the trip has been smooth and uneventful, almost. Uh, I just noticed about 10 miles ago as I'm uh, going through these little towns, as I stop and go, as I'm pulling away in the first three gears, uh, right as I'm engaging the clutch, I'm hearing a scraping, shh, kind of crunching sound. Uh, so I'm hoping it's just my rear wheel hugger uh, has cracked again uh, and it's dragging the chain or something. I don't hear it or feel it uh, as I'm underway, but it's just as I'm getting moving. So I hope it's not something uh, critical mechanical. That's gonna suck. Uh, it's saying that it's 0.7 miles. So where is that? I don't believe I've been to this campground, so I might have to call Neil uh, or pull up his precise uh, GPS coordinates that he gave and see if I can zoom in on him that way. We should be having one other uh, rider join us uh, either tonight or tomorrow morning, and there may be others that uh, join in the trip along the way, and I'm just hoping that whatever I'm hearing with this is not uh, some critical mechanical issue. Otherwise, I might have to throw in the towel. Uh, take all the stuff off of it when I get to camp and uh, run it around in slow circles and see if I can identify the sound of the noise. And it says I've arrived, so is that it? That must have been it. Yep, make a U-turn. So I'm gonna carefully exit the highway here and slip around and uh, go back to that uh, turn. I didn't see a sign for a campground, it just said, you've arrived. <laughs> okay, right here on the highway, really? All right, cool. Let's see if you can hear it. There it is, crunch, crunch, crunch. It almost sounds like it's up here in the front by the counter shaft sprocket, but I don't know. So I'm hoping it's just some debris or some garbage that's gotten sucked in there and uh oh hey gravel fun uh i'll uh just pick it out whatever the deal is it's shifting smoothly it's just a, a weird crunchy feeling so hopefully that's not bearings or some uh, nasty stuff down in the transmission that would spell disaster for the motor i've got a gold plug in there but i don't think it's made to capture that kind of stuff Not if you got bearings going out and chewing up gears. Okay, so this is a camping area, all right? And that looks like Neil Roth or... Yep, that's him. Yeah, I think we have been here before. Cool. All right, so I will uh, touch base with you all in a little while after I figure out what's uh, making noises. Where should I set up? What's that? Uh, tent. Yeah. Ooh, chunky. Chunky, chunky. <laughs> Getting my puck out so this thing doesn't sink in the sand or the soft ground. Everybody. I don't have a lot of battery in the GoPro, but I wanted to uh, touch base with you on the uh, ride out. Uh, we just left the little campground there off the side of the highway, and uh, Neil and I are headed toward Natchez, Mississippi now. We're going to do uh, a ride all the way up the Natchez Trace today, camp somewhere along the route, and uh, see where the rest of the route takes us. Uh, Neil is ahead of me a little ways here. Uh, we're going to stop at a uh, fuel station up the road, tank up the bikes, grab some coffee. Uh, if we find a uh, decent little restaurant or something, we might grab a bite of food. But otherwise, we're just going to hit the road. Uh, we're about 
an hour away from Nachos right now, and uh, the uh, there's a, a channel viewer, a member, uh, that is uh, meeting us there, uh, and he's going to ride up the trace with us. I think he's going to be on his uh, NC, oh, sorry, not NC, uh, CTX 700. Uh, he's got a DCT model of that. And uh, we're just going to take a, a leisurely ride. Be a, a good uh, good trip. I'm not sure if he's got camping gear. I don't think he does, so I'm not sure what he wants to do for uh, accommodations tonight if he decides to uh, stay uh, out in the woods with us, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, here's the road. I'll check in with you in just a bit. All right. Well, we are crossing the river into Natchez, Mississippi. Big old bridge. So uh, we are headed out. We've got uh, our new riding buddy, uh, Murnell, uh, on board with us. He's going to follow us up a little ways up the trace. We're going to go, I don't know, 150, 200 miles up the trace today. We're not sure where we're going to stop. Uh, we're going to moto camp. Uh, he's not going to camp. He's just going to ride with us a ways up, and then he'll uh, break off of the trace and hit the major highways, 61 or whatever it is, and come back uh, down around this way. So, it's just going to be a relaxing ride today, goofing off and soaking up some of this uh, incredible fall weather, man. It is so nice out here right now. Pig out in! And I'm YouTube famous right there in that spot. Or uh, Google Maps famous. Here. Yo! I ate there last night. Oh yeah? Awesome. The pig out, yeah, yeah, we go there all the time. I ate there about eight years ago and I went back for the first time last night. Nice.
never been down this road? No. No. It's new. It's good. It's good and twisty. It's crazy. It's like that. It's just a little more. That's part of the route out here is just beautiful, bordering the lake. It's a massive, massive lake. Man, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. So we are uh, pulling into Jeff Busby uh, campground here on the Natchez Trace. I've never been in here. I've uh, passed by it a few times. Saw the sign. Always wondered what was back here, so <laughs> now I know. Uh, I think it's just open camping everywhere. You just pick a spot and go. It's all public camping in here. Neil picked up some uh, steaks, uh, or not steaks, but like some fajita meat, pre-cut fajita meat, and uh, some tortillas and onions and tomatoes and stuff like that. And he wants to make uh, camp fajitas, so cool. And uh, we grab beer and some other quick eats, you know, canned food kind of stuff, and we're just going to wander through here and see uh, if uh, we find a spot that looks good. That's got a little bit too far of a drop down the hill. Got another guy on a bike. Cool. We'll find something. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Yeah, it's a little busy. Uh, there's one back there on the other side of him. Uh, it's got kind of a steep drop, but yeah, uh, I don't know. There's more stuff back here. Yeah, yeah. You'll you'll be you watch that first step. It's a doozy. Well, I had to get done by five. Rule coming out here, we both started out at six o'clock. Yesterday and today, so <laughs> get done. So the rule ain't really a rule, but it is a more of a suggestion. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, welcome to our what is this Sunday morning? Uh, we are headed north from the Jeff Busby campground uh, here in Ackerman, Mississippi. I think is where we're at, and uh, we're headed. Uh, further on up toward Tennessee. Uh, we can't take the Natchez Trace all the way up and around uh, because, let me get this thing away from the edge, it's a very steep downhill slope over there. Um, there's a bridge closure. Uh, so we can't take the Natchez all the way up the way we were planning, but we'll take a little detour and then uh, we're gonna end up uh, somewhere in uh, Tennessee today. Our buddy uh, Murnell uh, was with us for a little bit, and uh, he just took off a few minutes ago. He motocamped with us last night, his very first motocamp outing. So we went over to Walmart and uh, <laughs> had to get him a cheap tent and a sleeping bag, and I loaned him my uh, air pad, you know, my sleeping pad, the air mattress thing. Uh, that way he wouldn't be on the rocky ground or whatever and I just elevated my Kamek Sunda 2 converted it into the hammock mode and hung it in the trees so I didn't need the sleeping pad for me uh, but yeah anyway uh, we uh, had a good night sat around talked cooked campfire food uh, Neil made uh, camp fajitas uh, bought some fajita meat and some tortillas and all that and it's pretty good we go it's getting chilly uh, and apparently we're headed north into some cold uh, we're gonna have uh, a cold front that we're kind of going toward and it might have some rain in it I think the uh, rain forecast was about 30% so chances are we're gonna end up getting wet at some part of this journey and then uh, I believe it's tonight and tomorrow night uh, the overnight temperatures are gonna be pretty cold so 
uh, we're gonna have to batten down for that and uh, I've got plenty of warm gear and the, the Kamek Sunda that I have uh, is full protection you know the uh, the rain fly over the top of it goes pretty much down to the ground so you don't have a lot of mesh exposure and stuff like that for wind to cut through there and take the heat away from you so I chose it for this trip because I knew that it was going to be a little bit warmer than my other tents or definitely warmer than just a, a hammock so I should be all right uh, I've got a sleeping bag and also a uh, really super warm uh, over quilt uh, Sierra Madre Inferno 20 degree I think it is it's a it's a real warm one <laughs> like sweat in it it's so warm so uh, I'll have that over the top of me and I may put the uh, sleeping bag over my sleeping pad that way I've got you know more insulation beneath me uh, than just the sleeping pad itself should do fine okay well we're back in Houston <laughs> Houston Mississippi this is uh, right around where uh, Adrian and I stayed on the Cannonball Run trip last year. Uh, we were riding through this area, and it was getting pretty close to dark. So we decided, yeah, we've got to we got to pull off. We don't want to be riding this, messing with deer and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we found a camping site just right up in this area somewhere, not quite up to Tupelo. We'll probably pass it on the left side up here in just a little bit. Uh, anyway, we, we pulled in there. It wasn't really a proper campsite. It was more of a rest stop, and <laughs> we just we threw the tents out. We were like, all right, we're, we're done. This is it. A trooper came through late at night, probably 2.30 or 3 in the morning, and rolled through real slow and shined his spotlight on us and just kept going. Figured out we weren't bothering anybody. Witch dance. Yep, this is where we camped... Uh, Last time, we gotta get out of the road here, Neil. This is where uh, Adrian and I stopped and camped up uh, last year on the Cannonball, or on our way up to the Cannonball. So this is uh, down here where Adrian and I stayed last year, right on this little loop. We just rolled through here, looked for a spot that was secluded enough to not really be seen from the road, although the road is right there. Uh, but we didn't see campsites per se. There were tables and you know, all this out here, but uh, we parked the cubs right here <laughs> in front of these trash cans and uh, we set up right here. I was uh, right there on the ground and Adrian was between those trees. trees are beautiful. I've noticed that the trees haven't changed down here nearly as much as they have up north, uh, probably because the temperatures haven't dropped as much here. Uh, but when I was on my way uh, up to Maryland and back, everything up there is already real vibrant colors. Uh, this is, you know, a week later, uh, but a little further south, you haven't seen all the trees changing quite yet. They're starting to. So it's a gray, dreary day, but it's still a nice ride out here on the trace. Temperature's a little chilly, but that's fine for riding as long as you got a decent jacket, you know, cut the wind off of you. It's just fantastic out here. I love this. And last night, uh, my camera was dead, so I couldn't really record it, but we pulled off uh, for a Walmart. Uh, Neil found a Walmart, you know, on the, the GPS or the map or whatever, and... Uh, it was about 40 miles south of Ackerman. I can't remember how far back we were, but uh, Neil's just cooking along and then suddenly he hits the brakes and takes a hard left. And we go literally like a block uh, on a gravelly, bad pavement road, jogged right over and then hit a big highway uh, and went maybe a half a mile uh, <laughs> further north. And there's a Walmart right there. But the crazy thing was that Walmart parking lot the whole you know the the big complex for walmart literally butted up against the back of the trace you just couldn't see it because of all the trees so you're cruising along on this and it looks like you're out in the middle of a forest just in the middle of nowhere but there are highways paralleling this on both sides in a lot of cases 
uh, you know, you got Super Slab out there. I think it's 61 and uh, some other rural roads. It depends on which side it's on because this kind of meanders. So, yeah, uh, it's just you think you're totally isolated out here, but nah, you're, you're not more than a mile or two from a major highway and probably not more than 10 miles from civilization at any given point. You just have to go forward or back a few miles to find a town with services. So what I was uh, brainstorming on uh, is seeing all these bicyclists out here on the trace. Uh, we passed several troops of bicyclists uh, and big like tour vans that were dropping them off at some of the little uh, rest stop park and ride kind of things. And uh, I mean, we must have passed a hundred bicyclists out here yesterday on the trace, easily a hundred. And it got me to thinking, man, I would love to bring my road bike out here uh, and ride the trace. And it would just be fantastic. Come out here and bike pack on it for a few days. I don't know if I could do the whole 468 miles or whatever it is from end to end, uh, all the way up into Nashville, but man, that would be an epic, epic trip. Uh, you know, here's a guy bike packing, check him out. All right, oh yeah, he's doing it. You wanna talk about self-reliance and a minimalist challenge, bike packing is it. I mean, I do small motorcycle stuff and that's that's a minimalist challenge, but not to, not like bike packing because you are the power plant. You get tired and you can't go anymore. Well, you're just not making any more distance that day. You got to make it the next day. Man, I'm thinking about that. Hmm. Hmm, he says. <laughs> that might be another bucket list item right there. If I want to do that, I need to do it in the next few years while I'm still in decent enough shape to survive the trip as far as uh, leg and hip and you know, joint uh, issues. I'll have to get my butt reconditioned to doing uh, road biking. I haven't done it in a couple of years or so. When Adrian and I were on the Cannonball last year, coming down uh, through California, we met a guy on the road. Uh, he was bikepacking from the Canadian border. Uh, he started way up in Oregon, or I don't know where it was. Uh, started from the Canadian border all the way up north and he was uh, riding the, the rural highways and scenic byways all the way south into Mexico. And I don't remember what his start date and where his location was and all that when we talked to him, but I was pretty astonished because he was only like a little over two weeks into it, I think, if I remember right. And he had already made it a thousand miles down the coast. I was like, oh my God, dude, you have got legs of steel. That's crazy. And uh, he was an older guy, older than we are by far. I think he was in his 60s. And uh, yeah, it was pretty neat. And he was very impressed with our uh, Super Cubs and the trailers. He's like, oh my God, that's amazing, you know, and all that. And we're looking at his bike rig going, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> Holy crap, you are nuts. He was. He was equally as astonished at us crossing the country twice, pretty much, uh, on the cannonball on those little 125s, as we were astonished at him for riding, you know, uh, north to south down to Mexico. That was just nuts. You meet pretty impressive people on the road sometimes. The sheer will to do that, that's just, that's something else. I mean, people think I'm crazy doing these uh, small bike tours, but uh, no. Uh, that's that's tame. That's absolutely sane with just a, a little hint of uh, adventure uh, compared to bike packing the country. Oh man, that's just nuts. That's on a whole new level of big balls. You almost need a trailer to haul those balls behind you. Whew. All right, everybody. We're headed out from our lunch stop here at the far mounds uh, on the Natchez Trace. And the crazy thing was, we're sitting down over here at this uh, table on the left, uh, heating up our uh, Dentimore beef stew and some uh, other canned goods. And uh, this couple pulls in on the uh, uh, Can-Am here and says, uh, you know, mind if we come over and share a table with you? I said, yeah, sure, come on over. And uh, he went over and he was looking at uh, Neil's scooter and the trailer and uh, right as he's walking up to us, he said, man, that looks like something Quasi Motard would do. <laughs> I gave it about a two second pause and stared right at him and I said, well, you're looking at him. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Running into people just in the middle of nowhere. He's, uh, the, that couple is doing a trip 
They ran from uh, El Paso all the way up to Bar Harbor, Maine, and now they're coming back. And uh, he's apparently a channel watcher. I don't know if he's a subscriber, but he said he's watched all of my videos. Uh, and his wife said he has been talking about Quasimotard this entire trip. <laughs> <laughs> and then they ran into me here. Oh man, that's so cool. That's amazing, the neat people that you meet on the road. I'm just a crazy guy that likes doing dumb shit on little bikes, but uh, running into people that have the same interest, that is so cool. And then uh, up the road here, uh, Dirt Rider 22 uh, has been uh, conversing with me, uh, hitting me on uh, Instagram and texts uh, to see where I'm at. He's going to try to meet me uh, somewhere up here toward, I don't know, Florence or somewhere. Uh, apparently the, the trace is closed just a few miles up the road for some kind of construction. So there's a detour. We've got to get off, head over toward Florence, uh, and then we'll kind of go up and around and uh, curve back in to hit our campsite in uh, Lawrenceburg. So. Nice little downtown center. Still don't know where I am. Park place something. Okay. Music. I don't know where I am. I'm glad... Uh, Neil is routing and knows where he is because I don't have a clue. Sixth Street and Montgomery Avenue somewhere. Sheffield, Alabama, Municipal Hall. Okay, so I'm in Sheffield, Alabama. <laughs> Hell if I knew. I knew we crossed into Alabama 40 or 50 miles ago or something, but no clue. All right, so we're headed across the Tennessee River here and uh, Dirt Rider 22 is supposed to be meeting us just on the other side of the river. We got a boat hauling ass down there. Uh, he said he's over here just on the other side of the bridge at Longshore Cycles or something like that. So we'll truck on over the bridge here and uh, meet up with him. And uh, he said he knows this whole route that we're going to be taking up toward Lawrenceburg and he might ride with us for a while. He went home to grab his bike and said, I'll meet you uh, uh, just across the Tennessee River. All right. So I'm looking for Longshore Cycles. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? No, hope not. No, no. He said something about just as it expands to four lanes. No, that ain't it. All right, keep going. I have no idea where I am. If it's not, oh, there it is, shit. There he is, on a dirt bike. Yeah. Howdy! So Dirt Rider 22 is gonna give us an escort pretty much all the way up to uh, Davy Crockett Park. Uh, he's uh, He said he's gonna turn off just, I don't know, a few miles shy of there, wave us on and uh, We'll just be on a straight shot into the park from that point, but he's going to lead us exactly where uh, he thinks we should go. He knows all these roads and where he's going, so we're going to we're going to get a local escort. That's pretty cool. Keep us off the slab. Maybe find some interesting back roads. He's got a DR650 here that's all kitted out with cogent dynamic suspension and all the goodies. He does a lot of dirt riding and he's got other bikes too. He's got a Bergman 200 and a Kawasaki W800 and some other bikes. Uh, he's a little bit of a collector of multiple flavors like I am. <laughs> there he goes. Wheelie boy. <laughs> yeah, so he's about my size. He's 5'7", about 170. So uh, we're pretty similar in stature. And I was asking him if he has trouble with this DR, and uh, he said it's it's set up pretty well. It doesn't have too much suspension sag, and he's able to one foot this thing just like you know any other big dirt bike. So he didn't have any problem with it. I was pretty much the same on my DR. Uh, it 
I had my suspension jacked up because I was doing single track and heavy uh, off-road stuff uh, where I needed the extra ground clearance. So it was a little tall for street riding, uh, but my uh, KLR 650s were much worse, much harder to get to the ground for me because the seats are so wide on those things. Uh, the DR seat is a lot narrower. It's just narrower through the waist. Easier to get down. If you got a 33, 34 inch inseam, it's no problem. But uh, if you're just a little short stub like I am, five, six and a half, five, seven with a 30 inch inseam, <laughs> uh, some of these bikes can be tough. He said he was checking the forecast and there's supposed to be some rain rolling in, but uh, probably won't be through this area until around five. So we're hoping that uh, that's gonna be the same case for up there at Davy Crockett Park where we can uh, get set up before the weather turns nasty on us, at least get our tents set and be able to get dry if we need to be dry. We'll get camp set up and then we'll probably uh, come back out, look around for some food, sit around at a barbecue place or I don't know, we'll find something. Stretch our legs out a little bit, have a couple of beers and eat some good food go back and freeze tonight because it's going to get chilly i think the dirt rider just peeled off uh, he gave me his very last sticker that he had uh he said his wife made him a bunch of uh, stickers on her cricket machine <laughs> my sister's made me some i need to hit my wife up to uh, make some for me i guess so i've got his very last uh, dirt rider 22 sticker i'm going to put that on one of the bikes i'll probably put it on the xt pay the name some homage. I don't know what sounds good tonight. Man, looking at that Domino's pizza right there, I don't know why, that just struck me. Pizza sounds kind of good, but not necessarily Domino's. I don't know. Italian sounds good. That's funny. Neil, uh, no sooner did I uh, mention something about that uh, Domino's pizza that we just passed. Pizza sounded kind of good. I was thinking pizza or Italian or something. Uh, Neil came about two blocks down and he pulled off here and said we just passed that Domino's pizza back there that looked pretty good <laughs> so we're going back we're going to order a pizza and we'll just take it to the park with us because the park is just a few miles down the road
Shower house, all right. There we go. Well, for tonight. Nobody tuned in. Oh, there's two people in. Howdy, all. We're sitting around a campfire. I don't know how the streaming is working, but uh, chime in. Hey, we got five people in here. Neil and I are sitting around a campfire, uh, right. war warming our toes. It's not real cold yet tonight. It's getting cold. Uh, it's going to get down in the high 40s tonight, I think. Oh, uh, bye. We're wearing t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt just to keep the mosquitoes off of me for now. Uh, yeah. But tomorrow it's going to get ugly. Uh, we're headed over into uh, Metropolis, Illinois, and we're supposed to have freezing temps overnight. I'll go over there and curl up in my kamek sunda I'll, I'll actually walk you guys over there to it i gotta put my boots back on oh. show you my accommodations for the night I'll leave the rest of this here to burn out and i'll walk you guys this way here's the steed that brought me here and over here this light isn't super bright, but uh, you'll you'll get the gist of it. This is uh, home for the evening, as it has been many evenings. This is the same tent that I took on the uh, Cannibal Run. So this thing has been around the country. And uh, I can pull this out of the way. And you guys get to see this uh, voluminous tent inside. I haven't set up my sleeping bag and the other stuff. But uh, yeah, so. Here's home for the evening. 
my little media organizer pouches back here. I can throw all my you know, wallet and gun and everything else uh, out of my way so I don't roll over on it in the middle of the night. Give myself a power vasectomy. Uh, sleeping bag. I've got other sleeping bags. I've got a bug light. This thing is interesting. If I can hang on to it. Uh, it's got the the blue, you know, the purple thing and a bug zapper grid in it. And it's battery powered. <laughs> it's fantastic. Or not even battery. It's USB. Charge it up. And then when you need light, it's also got light. Whee! Conveniences of home out on the road. Thanks, David. Thanks for tuning in. Super Steve, thanks. I'll catch you all next time.